Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. And with so many people in Spain on sick leave, essential and basic services are starting to suffer. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a beer or a coffee. Many thanks for that. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as we know, COVID cases in Spain are surging at the moment. And that means that a lot of people are off work on sick leave. And as we can see here, surge in people on sick leave due to COVID puts strain on basic services and health services. In the health area of Alcazar, Guadalajara, which serves about 25,000 people, 50% of the doctors are infected by COVID, according to the health service of Castilla-La Mancha. The local clinic of Las Castillas, which belongs to this area, is closed due to pandemic risk, as reflected in a message at the entrance. All residents should go with their respective appointments to El Casar. We apologize for any inconvenience. The sixth wave of the coronavirus and the Omicron variant, which has developed the fastest spread in history, are putting a strain on essential services performed by the police, firefighters or health workers. Transport professionals are also affected. Like the rest of the population, they are coping with varying degrees of success with the countless sick leaves and quarantines of their colleagues. So essential and basic services here in Spain trying to cope given the amount of people on sick leave due to COVID-19 at the moment. And as we saw there in one health area in Guadalajara, 50% of the doctors are off sick. Now today, the 6th of January, is one of the most important days on the Spanish calendar, and it's the day that the three wise men bring gifts to children around the country. And last night, Spanish families hit the streets in droves to welcome these three kings. As we can see here, the three wise men fill Spanish streets with hope despite rain and pandemic restrictions. Neither the rain, nor the low temperatures, nor the coronavirus have prevented their majesties, the three wise men from the east, from being here for another year after arriving by land, sea and air. Throughout the afternoon, Melchior, Gaspar and Baltasar have travelled around all the cities and towns in different parades, announcing their arrival laden with gifts and hope before a magical night. In Barcelona, the three wise men arrived at the port by boat and shortly afterwards began to parade through the streets of the city. Before starting, King Melchior thanked all of the children who were giving an example of courage during the pandemic, to which he added that they are happy and excited to see that they are well. So nothing stopping the three wise men from arriving in Spain this year and giving their gifts to all of the kids. The pandemic didn't stop them, the rain didn't stop them, and neither did the cold weather in much of the country. Now let's have a look at some COVID data, and as we know, case numbers continue to rise. And coronavirus incidence is up 140 points to 2,574 cases per 100,000 population. The Ministry of Health has reported 137,180 new infections and has added 148 deaths to the official count. The cumulative incidence is up to 140 points to 2,500 174 cases per 100,000 population in the last 14 days. In total, 6,922,466 people have been infected and 89,837 people have died since the start of the pandemic. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced that from next Friday it will no longer be necessary to take an antigen test 48 hours before travelling to the UK. Given the extent and the speed with which the Omicron variant has spread across Europe, the requirement to test negative has meant that many people have had to cancel their flight plans even though they were symptom free and had a full vaccination schedule and even booster doses. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain and we can see that accumulated incidence rate of over two and a half thousand. Hospital pressure is now high at 10.9 percent and there are 13,359 COVID patients around the country and ICU pressure is also high at 21.6 percent and there are 2,005 COVID patients, unfortunately, in ICU. Now, Spanish Consumer Affairs Minister Alberto Garzón is making headlines again, and he's back on his anti-meat-eating bandwagon. And the government has disavowed Garzón over the meat case, and Podemos is defending its minister. The sights are set on Alberto Garzón, again and again with the meat industry as a motive. After asserting that intensive farming mega farms pollute and produce poor quality meat for export, 
the sector has turned against him and the opposition is calling for his dismissal. As in previous controversies, critical voices have come not only from the right, but also from the government itself. The Minister of Education, Pilar Alegria, has pointed out that the statements were made in a personal capacity. In the face of the wave of criticism, Univas Podemos has also defended the minister. The government's position on this issue was declared on the 28th of December with the approval of the CAP with the support of the livestock sector, she said in an interview on Ondacero's Masti Uno program, insisting that Garzón's words do not mark the government's position on meat companies in Spain. When asked by the presenter, Carlos Alcina, whether at least Garzón will not speak on behalf of the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Alegría's answer was also negative. No, it's Mr. Garthon's position, she said. So Mr. Garthon again in hot water over his comments made about the meat industry here in Spain. And he made these comments in an interview with the British newspaper The Guardian. So let's have a look at some of the comments he made. And we can see the headline, Spanish should eat less meat to limit climate crisis, says Minister. Eating less meat will play a key role in helping Spain mitigate the effects of the climate emergency, slow the process of desertification, and protect its vital tourism industry, the country's consumer affairs minister has said. The minister said that the country's geography made it profoundly vulnerable to climate change, adding the Spain people know and love is in danger of disappearing forever. If we don't act, it won't just be climate change we're dealing with, it'll be the triple crisis, the loss of biodiversity, pollution and climate change, he said. It would be the end for a country like Spain. Spain is a country in the Mediterranean basin. It isn't the UK or Germany, and desertification is a very serious problem for our country, not least because it depends so much on tourism. Visiting a desert isn't quite as attractive as visiting the Costa del Sol, he said. So there we go, some of the words from Mr. Garthon's interview with The Guardian. And let's see if he's successful in convincing Spaniards to eat less meat. Now another Italian mafia boss has been found hiding out in Spain this time in the north of Madrid. And he was caught after a Google Maps sighting in Spain. An Italian mafia boss who has been on the run for decades has been arrested after he was spotted on Google Maps. Gioquino Gamino, 61, was found in Galapagar, Spain, where he was living under the name Manuel. A Google Street View shot showing a man resembling Gamino standing in front of a grocery shop was key to tracking the fugitive, investigators say. Gamino escaped to Rome prison in 2002 and was sentenced to life in jail the following year for murder. He was a member of a Sicilian mafia group known as Stida and was one of Italy's most wanted gangsters. Sicilian police believe Gamino was in Spain, but it was the photo of him talking to a man outside El Huerto de Manu, or Manu's garden, that triggered the immediate investigation. His identity was confirmed when police found a Facebook page of a now-closed restaurant, Cocina de Manu, which was located nearby. It had posted photos of Gamino wearing chef's clothes and he was identified by a scar on his chin. So Google Maps and social media leading to the downfall of an Italian fugitive in Spain, hiding out in a small town in the Madrid community, and he had even opened a restaurant here. So it just goes to show how easy it is for Italian fugitives to hide from the law in Spain. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Derek. Hi Stuart, nice to see you have escaped to the coast. I have seen today Novak Djokovic has a vaccination exemption to play in the Australian Open. I was wondering what your opinion is as an Aussie who has not been allowed into his own country because of the pandemic. P.S. Congratulations on the Ashes win. Yeah, Derek, thanks for the comment and what a circus this Djokovic and Australian Open story is turning into. I don't know the full story, but apparently he was given an exemption to play in the tournament by the organisers given the fact that he is not vaccinated against COVID-19. And then, as a result of that exemption, the SH1T slowly began to hit the fan. Yesterday, I think he was refused entry into the country by border control, and I now believe it's going to the courts. And to answer your question and give my opinion on the matter, I think it's an absolute disgrace that he was given an exemption, given the fact that so many Australians have not been able to go home over the last 18 months or so. But we all know that there are two types of citizens when it comes to COVID-19 rules and regulations. People like Djokovic and other sports stars that make a lot of money for a lot of people. And then there's the rest of the population that includes myself. So we'll see how this story plays out over the next few days. One here from Brave Dove Vlog, you jinxed the weather, now cold and raining in Mijas. Yeah, Brave Dove, thanks for the comment. And sorry if I jinxed the weather down there in Malaga, but I just checked the forecast for Mijas and it's sun, sun, and more sun forecast 
for the next five or six days. So feel free to thank me for bringing the good weather with me back to Spain. One here from Les. Thanks, Stuart, for the tremendous job you did in 2021. I wish you and your family the very best in 2022 and look forward to being kept abreast of news events in Spain this year. Yeah, Les, thanks for the comment. Glad you liked the videos and I hope you have a fantastic 2022 also. And don't worry, as I said the other day, my plan is to continue with the news videos throughout 2022 and hopefully the news will be more positive. Hopefully we can get this virus under control and get back to living our lives without restrictions. One here from Ivan. Happy New Year, Stu. Wish you happiness and health. I just contacted Johnny seeking some advice on buying a house in Spain while being on a UK payroll. Any tips, ideas? We plan to buy in Catalonia or the Valencian community. Thank you. Yeah, Van, thanks for the comment and happiness and health to you too. Unfortunately, I don't have too much advice to offer on buying a house here in Spain on a UK payroll, but I'm sure Johnny can help you out. And I'll also open the question up to the community so we can get some feedback there as well. So if anybody has any tips or advice for Ivan on buying a house here in Spain on a UK payroll, let us know in the comment section below. One here from Andrea. Hi Stu, now watching you more often as I'm flying out to Spain on the 1st of February for a two month stay. How did the Spanish cope with having to wear masks outside, especially on sunny days? Regards, Andrea, Surrey, UK. Yeah, Andrea, thanks for the comment and good luck with your trip to Spain in February. And when it comes to Spanish people coping with having to wear a mask outside on sunny days, they seem to be coping fairly well and you do see a lot of people walking around outside with face masks on. But again, it depends where you are and face masks are only compulsory outdoors if you can't maintain a safe distance between yourself and another person. So for example, if you are in an area that is not crowded and you can maintain a safe distance, you don't have to wear a mask. But if you're walking down the Gran Via in Madrid at seven o'clock on Saturday evening, probably a good idea to put it on. And finally, one here from David. Happy New Year, sir. May 2022 be brighter for you and your family. Yeah, David, thanks for the comment and Happy New Year to you and your family. And let's hope that 2022 is certainly a brighter year. I'm optimistic that it will be, and I don't think it'll be worse than 2020 or 2021. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.